to quit and, and become a full-time artist and I gave up everything, the studio, I broke up my relation, I uh, gave away my house. <laughs> Hello, my name is Karski and today I'm at the Ardo show. This artist, a former business owner, shut down his big graphic design company to become a full-time artist. Please give a warm welcome to Karski. Yeah, welcome to the Ardo show. Thank you. First, you know, you started uh, picking up the spray can at a very, very young age. Can you please tell us how young you were and how you got into it? Um, I think I was 10 years old, 1984. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I stole some spray cans from my dad from the shed. Yeah. I started painting. I got introduced um, into graffiti by a cousin of mine. I mean, I started as a young rebellious kid, you yeah. know, discovering spray paint, putting your name everywhere. I started to paint some, some rooms of, of classmates. Yeah. And that's how it slowly developed to more and more professional way of doing graffiti and making a living yeah. out of it. Um, what is the craziest thing you have experienced doing out on the streets. Oof, the craziest thing, let me think. Going into the tunnels in New York and almost got hit by a subway. Yeah, that's kind of crazy, but working for the Shaikh in Abu Dhabi was also like kind that's of a mad project. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we've done an amazing project uh, which originally started in Beirut where we had to paint the most exclusive nightclub in the world. Um, the Sheikh from Abu Dhabi came to party in the other nightclub of the owner and heard about the new nightclub and wrote a check and said, okay, I want to have a copy on my island. People with a lot of money have a big wish list as well. I mean, okay. they wanted to have Banksy, for example, and, and yeah. We got pretty far, but when they realized that Banksy is never going to paint what they want, uh, yeah. they realized like, oh, that's impossible in our country because we were not even allowed to paint a woman, for example. Yeah, cause... okay. I want to talk a little bit about what made you just, not just quit your job, but you... You shut down a company. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You ran a successful company. Yeah. At a certain point, I realized, like, okay, I'm earning a lot of money, we're doing pretty well, but I'm not happy. Hmm. You know, like when a customer tells you, okay, this font has to change into that font, this red has to be that red, etc., etc. Discussions about nothing, basically. And I wasn't creative in my whole work anymore because I was dealing with my interns, I was dealing with the staff, etc. Yeah. etc. Et so, and I moved to Amsterdam and became a full time artist. Yeah. And, and it's the best decision ever. And of course, you don't earn the amount of money that I used to earn, but I'm so much happier. Yeah. And yeah, in my opinion, with money, you don't buy happiness. Mm -hmm. um, how yeah. important is social media? Really important, yeah. yeah. I think it's one of the most important things mm -hmm. at the moment. Yeah. More important than my website. Oh, really? Yeah. You reckon? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. That's interesting. Do yeah. you get a lot of inquiries through social media yeah. then? Yeah, a Just lot. personal messages and... A lot, a lot. Sponsorship, I mean, clothing is sponsored yeah. through Instagram. Like, we got approached by a clothing company, like... We want to sponsor you guys. Um, now really a lot of festivals around the world that yeah. see your art and invite you to paint murals at their festival. Yeah. Yeah. Let's but what are the like? What do you have to do for them? Do you have to post the photo a week, uh, hashtagging well, them? Well, in in like? this case, we're really lucky. They want us to do nothing. <laughs> like nothing, like insane. Yeah, we, yeah. We, we even felt guilty, you know, because we go to the warehouse, they are like, okay, take whatever you want. And then we're like, okay, but let us, you know, make a painting and put it in your catalog or some. So now this year we're going to, um, they're going to do some stuff in the catalog and, and probably we're going to paint at a fair as well for them. Yeah. 
but besides that yeah we just wear it and of course every upload i put on instagram i hashtag you do them it, yeah because you want to not because exactly. it's a criteria exactly mm -hmm. but it's not a criteria they yeah. just want us to wear it and they like the stuff to to look pretty okay mm. so i have one jacket like this a, a clean one yeah but i also have my dirty painting jacket so yeah. i can paint in in their clothes as yes, well yes yes yeah. what do you hear from other you know street artists graffiti artists and stuff like that with the way that you are taking your art and taking on sponsorships and stuff well you know you always have people who are liking it and people who are hating it i mean graffiti comes from a culture where it's supposed to be illegal you use paint at night you have to steal your spray cans etc etc that's the origin from the whole thing i think lately graffiti uh, evolved in different ways you have the street artists who have never painted a train have never painted a piece mm -hmm. and call themselves graffiti artists well in my opinion you're not a graffiti artist if you do stencil art only because you use a spray can doesn't make you a graffiti artist mm -hmm. so that's that's a difficult um, subject I think um, so yeah of course there will be people who hate what mm -hmm. I do because it's kind of the commercial side yes. of the graffiti part but yeah I mean I prefer to do this than um, working in a supermarket or as a plumber or whatever mm -hmm. um, yeah no I, I, I don't mind to do some commercial stuff as well mm -hmm. I know I do the, 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 the little part of the commercial stuff gives me so much freedom that I can do all the free yes, art yes. and paint in my studios for weeks while other people are sitting in their office from 9 to 5 and, mm -hmm. yeah. You have an amazing studio. It's Thanks. huge. Yeah, I was lucky. Yeah. Tell us how you got it and, and what the story of the building is. It's kind of an anti-squad system we have in the Netherlands. Um, so I pay a small amount of fee so people don't squat the building. Yeah. So I got this space and in the first weeks that I was moving in, I got to speak some locals and they were like, ah, oh, what are you going to do? Like, <laughs> pretty... I'm Who like, are you? Uh, what are you doing well, I'm, a, I'm an artist. Ah, oh, finally something positive. I'm like, why? <laughs> so they start to tell me, like, at one day, because it used to be the shed of of different sheds of the um, apartment building above one day a guy turned up and he told them okay your shed is mine now and you have to park your bike a kilometer that way kind of strange in my opinion already but <laughs> turned out that the guy changed the place into a drug lab and produced drugs there yeah. he got busted by the police um, a new company came in. The new company said they were fixing video recorders and sound equipment and stuff like that. Turned out they were making child porn in the basement. No. So they got busted as well. Then a new company came in and that one burned down because they had a, a drug lab like a marijuana ganja place in the basement as well and then the insurance company said okay you have to take out the whole floor and then they created my studio space you're going on to a new project very soon in two weeks time yeah not exactly in two weeks but yeah Roughly, pretty soon yeah. um we're going to zimbabwe it's gonna be my fourth time in zimbabwe and we're gonna do yeah a charity project for school mm. And I ask all the kids to paint a character of themselves, mm. like, uh, to draw a character of yeah. themselves. And we have a 350 meter long wall, so we're going to surround the school by yeah. their own characters. Um, which is, you know, like being an artist and having the talent to paint and mm. create stuff in the world is a big gift. And I think it's super nice to with your gift not just to earn money but also to to make people happy yeah they have to paint the, the characters themselves we, we will sketch them up but they have to fill it in oh and, really and, yeah 
yeah, we really want to work together with together the kids. With them. Yeah. Exactly. And, and you also have said that you like to tell stories in your paintings. Yeah, absolutely. What sort of, is there a general sort of story that you no. tell all the time? Or? No, no. It really depends on the neighborhood where we're going to paint. I mean, I think that's the m most interesting part. You know, you go to a mural, you get inspired by, mm -hmm. for example, um, uh, in Austria, we ask the people there like okay are there some some people in your town in your city that stand out that dare to speak up or and there's a cartoonist and there's a female fighting for human rights and we're gonna do a double exposure of these two people we were invited um, last year in New Jersey uh, to paint a mural in New Jersey and as soon as we get an invitation, we start to inv investigate, like, okay, what's happening in New Jersey? What's yes. it known for? Um, well, New Jersey was known for, like, uh, the harbor and pollution, et cetera, et cetera. So we came up with a team that was basically based on these kind of subjects. Right. Yeah. What is it in your eyes that makes a great artist? I think as an art artist, it's important to keep on developing. Like, don't stuck to the same thing, and, and keep on pushing yourself, and be critical in your work, and, and, yeah. and try to renew yourself and, and evolve. Thank you so much for coming to the Art Thou Show. You're I'm welcome. so happy that you Thanks. managed to take your time out and come and see us. Thanks for having me. Thanks for inviting me to yeah. your studio and all that. Thanks for coming by. And for everybody watching, remember, be different, be you. Until next time. Bye. Cool. <laughs> That's it.